Uh, so today we're working on uh, some facial designs, some drawings in our sketchbook. So the one that I'm working on here is we're going to be working on the human face. So first thing at first, when I'm working on a human face, start off with that nose. Why the nose? Because it's the center of the face and we can work and create our designs going around that face. And I definitely want to have that illustrated in the design as we're working on it. Now, as you guys are uh, creating your faces, think about the different characteristics that you're going to want to employ into your designs uh, kind of across the board. Now, after you get the nose in there, working on the eye segments, eye sections, try and make sure that those eyes are balanced. I usually like to turn my paper uh, vertically around so that I can see a cross examination of how the different uh, so that I make sure that the eyes are kind of on the same level. There's not really much change in between the two. And then working down from there, so below the nose, uh, your lip guidelines so that you can create where your lips are going to be. Don't ask why, I just draw really big lips on this guy that I was working on. Um, just doing a regular face and just, that was the ones that kind of just came to me when I was working. Uh, as you're working on shading, and you can always pull back some of those lines especially the harsher lines for the top, the top and bottom of the lip and the way that you add shading in. Uh, now adding a, just a cap off to the forehead piece right now, I'm not really using it for, oh this is where the hair is going to start right now, I'm just using it as a, as a guide post for me as I'm adding in my shading. Now when you're working on a face, 90% of the face is all designed through the shading process, so how we add shading to it. So nice dark pupils inside of those irises uh, and then the iris lines around some little dash lines, some jagged lines going around the eyes to uh, showcase the rods and cones of the iris so that you can have that constrict the, um, that webbing kind of design around it. Uh, usually what I do is either A, figure eights, or B, just kind of lines pulling from the pupil out to the outside of the iris. Now as I'm adding in the shading here and working on the, on the eyebrows, I don't want to layer on too thick right now with the pen. Uh, just because once you put on that thick pen color, those pen lines, it's hard to pull back from that. So adding in, thinking about where my most dramatic and heavy shadow is going to be, is going to definitely be on the right side of this face. So I want to start in adding in those base lines, those base elements to showcase where those shadows are going to be evolving to. Now looking at the structure of the face, I definitely thought the face was a guy's face. And because it's a guy's face, I wanted to showcase like a beard, a mustache. Uh, into it, which you guys will see in just a minute. And bringing in those levels of shadow right now, just a, a bit of a gray scale, just to start adding in structure, some details, and then thickening up those shadow components as well as the, uh, the, the side of the goatee for what you guys are seeing. Uh, now, as you guys work those lines back and forth, notice how I'm only working in a hatching pattern right now. We'll be doing a cross hatching pattern, which I've actually got a little bit on in that bottom chin area where I'm bringing the uh, side of the beard up and, and around. The thing that I've noticed with faces is, as I've watched students over the years create their own pieces, is that the faces that you draw, everybody, every face that you draw, every face that you think of and you see in a dream sequence in your mind's eye, is somebody that you've come in contact with before. Um, it's one of those things that I, you, if you study psychology and, and look into how the brain works, uh, if you have a dream where you see somebody's face, you don't know who that person is, you did come across that person at some point in your life because the brain can't come up with that face on its own. It has to see something from reality. So who the person is off the top of my head, no clue. Uh, I do definitely think that there's elements of myself in most of my drawings, especially when I have a guy in there. When, I, when it's women, it varies between different people that I know. Um, and it also depends on the type of flavor that I wanted to impart upon that personality of the creation that I'm doing. Um, as a generous guy's face, I think doing the beard and the mustache, I'm definitely pulling that for myself. And, um, and those darker sections, uh, just the way that light travels across the face. I analyze my own face when I'm doing a self-portrait and I have to think about if the light is coming on this side of my face, where is that shadow effect going to be uh, going to evolve from? So, just coming in with the last bit of design, last bit of characteristics inside of that face. So, as you guys are working on your own stuff, as always, uh, take time, do several sketches, showcase this stuff in um, online, in portfolios, so that everybody can see it and take a glimpse at what the work that you're producing. 
And please don't forget to leave a comment, like, subscribe down at the bottom. I always like to hear from my classmates. And as you guys watch the rest of this uh, design, I'm only working on half the face for this piece. Uh, stay tuned for some future illustrations I'm going to do some, for some other sketchbooks. Uh, but I will always see you guys next class. Later. Later.